With college graduations coming up right around the corner and unemployment claims at all time highs, with so much uncertainty in the market, you might be feeling pretty concerned right about now if you're trying to break into the commercial real estate investment industry for the first time today. And while unfortunately we can't change what's going on with the economy right now, there are some big steps that you can take to maximize your chances of success and put yourself ahead of the pack when you're applying for commercial real estate jobs. So in this video, what we're gonna do is break down four of the most important things that you can do to position yourself as the best candidate for the role that you're applying for, even if hiring starts to tighten up. Hey, this is Justin for breaking the CRE.com. And if you're new here on this channel, we talk about real estate investing careers and real estate financial analysis. So if you're looking to break into the industry for the first time, or you're looking to advance your current real estate investing career, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now with everything going on in the economy right now and the direct effect that business closures have on commercial real estate investors, right now is a time of a lot of uncertainty for both commercial real estate investment and brokerage firms and those firms employees. And with uncertainty of a portfolio's performance also comes potential uncertainty on what hiring needs could be in the immediate future, which could cause some sort of a pullback in hiring over the next few months. But if right now you're graduating from college or graduate school and you're looking to find a job in May or June, there are a few major things that you can do to make sure that you position yourself in the best possible way to land the jobs that you're looking for. So the number one thing on this list, and in my opinion, by far the most important, is to be the most talented candidate in the resume stack. Especially right now, if you have downtime and are stuck at home, now is the time to be learning and mastering the skill sets that you're going to need to know to both land jobs and be successful in the roles that you apply for. Now, if you're looking for analyst or associate jobs in commercial real estate, these skill sets are specifically going to boil down to Excel and potentially Argus. So take the time to learn the key real estate finance concepts used in the industry. Take the time to learn how a real estate financial model is put together. Take the time to learn how to build a pro forma from scratch. And if you're planning to work on the principal or investor side of the business, learn concepts like equity waterfall modeling and deal analysis from an investor's perspective so that you can add these valuable skill sets to your resume and speak to these during the interview process. These are the concepts that are covered in Break Into CRE courses and in Break Into CRE Academy. So if you have downtime right now and you know you wanna get in the industry, I highly recommend taking a look at one or more Break Into CRE courses or potentially enrolling in Break Into CRE Academy while you have the time to really focus on mastering the material. And believe me, your knowledge and skill set really matters when you're applying for jobs and especially when you're interviewing for jobs. Most hiring managers are seasoned industry professionals and they're going to be able to know based on your conversation how much you know about the industry, how much you know about real estate finance, and what you can do in Excel and Argus to help them achieve their goals at that analyst or associate level. If you've exaggerated your knowledge on your resume and you're trying to BS your way through an interview, hiring managers are definitely going to know that and be able to sniff that out. But if you really know your material inside and out, that is also going to show and you're going to go into the interview process much more confidently and that's going to show really well to that hiring manager as long as you come across with humility and that will set you far above your competition, especially when you have multiple candidates interviewing for one single role. Early on in my career, one of my favorite mentors told me, Justin, you need to treat your career like a sport. And what he meant by that is that you need to approach your skill set just like a professional athlete would approach practicing and getting better to perfect their craft and become the best in the industry. The way I like to think about it is honestly how Kobe Bryant used to train. Always the first guy in the gym, always the last guy to leave, and constantly watching game film to find his weak spots and get better for the next game. And if you approach building your skill set with the tenacity of becoming the best you can be, no matter what, you're going to set yourself up for success regardless of what's happening in the overall economy. Now, once you feel confident that you have the skill sets for the jobs that you're applying for, number two, and what is likely going to get your foot in the door for an interview, is to craft your resume to make sure that you are a no-brainer for the role that you're applying for. And this doesn't just mean cleaning up your resume in general. This means specifically tailoring your resume and your experiences to tell the story about why you are the perfect fit 
for the role that you're applying for for every job that you send in your resume and put in an application. So if over the next few months, the supply of jobs is low and the amount of applicants is high, hiring managers are going to have a large pool of candidates to choose from. That means they're probably going to have to go really quickly over that first round of resumes to be able to filter and narrow down the people who might be the right fit for the role. And that means that from the start, you really need to come off as the missing puzzle piece that solves all of the problems that they're looking to solve by hiring someone in the first place. So to modify your resume to show that you are that missing puzzle piece, I'd recommend reading very closely through the job description, very closely through the responsibilities of the role, and very closely through the experience requirements for the role as well. From there, you can tailor your resume to become that perfect fit by highlighting your specific experiences and skill sets that directly align with the skill sets that that company is seeking in a candidate. That means that if the company is looking for someone with a very strong Excel background, you should be highlighting your past job experiences where you've used Excel successfully and the coursework that you've taken specific to using Excel in a real estate finance or financial modeling capacity to be able to successfully perform the responsibilities that you see on that job description. So for example, if the company is looking for someone who can build real estate equity waterfall models in Excel, you might modify your resume and delete a generic bullet point on one of your experiences to show them that you do have experience working in equity waterfall models, or if you don't have that experience, make sure that you add coursework like the real estate equity waterfall modeling masterclass or the advanced real estate equity waterfall modeling masterclass to show the employer that even if you don't have experience doing it, you've gone out of your way and taken your own time to learn the key skill sets that you need to be successful in the role you're applying for. This can seem like a tedious task to do this for every single role you're applying for, but make sure not to skip this. As someone who has seen a lot of resumes over time, I can tell you that it's really easy to gloss over a clearly generic resume, and especially in a competitive job market, the only resumes that are going to stand out are the resumes that clearly show that the applicant can do the job that they're applying for. So once you've built your skill sets and have your resume cleaned up, you should start getting some interviews. And during those interviews, especially during the tough time, my number three tip here is to make it clear that you have a do whatever it takes attitude to make sure the company is successful even outside of your job description. So when times get tough, employers are often strapped for cash and not able to fully build out their staff as much as they might like during good times. And with that, many employees are required to do more than one job, and especially if you're only a few years into your career, this is likely going to be the case. So during the interview process, it's your job to show the interviewer that you're able to take on multiple different projects, you're able to work on things that you may not be an expert in, and you're able to learn and adapt quickly. And even though this might seem tough or an additional workload at the time, I promise you this is a huge benefit later on in your career. The more you can get exposed to earlier on in your career as far as acquisitions versus asset management or brokerage versus lending, the more well-rounded of a real estate professional you're going to be as you progress throughout your career, and you're going to have the different perspectives of different parts of a transaction and different parts of operating a property, which is going to be a huge value add for you as you move into leadership roles or potentially start your own company. Also highlighting some experiences of you doing something like this in a different role will also be extremely valuable during that interview process. Any way that you can show you took initiative or helped someone outside of your current job function is going to be huge in proving that you can add value during tight times when staffing levels aren't necessarily where the company would like them to be. Now finally, once you've done those first three things and you start getting offers, the number four thing I'd recommend here is to make sure that you're getting your foot in the door even if the job isn't perfect. Now this is mostly advice for people who are first breaking into the industry, but also applicable for people who are looking to make a major shift within the industry as well. This means that if you don't necessarily want to be in asset management long-term, but an asset management analyst role comes up and you're able to take that opportunity, it may be better to get that experience versus potentially not having anything for one, two, or three months or more if hiring continues to be tight. In times like these, some experience is better than no experience, and especially if staffing is tight, 
you're likely going to have the opportunity to work in different parts of the business, even if your technical job role doesn't have you working on those things. As I mentioned before, having a well-rounded skill set and working in different parts of the business is going to help you a lot as you progress throughout your career and is something that many real estate professionals don't have that have stayed in the same part of the business for their entire career and have a very one-dimensional approach to how they look at real estate. Now, it's important to note that I would be picky with location, as I talked about in a previous video, but as far as the part of the business that you're working in, I wouldn't be too picky if this is the first role that you're taking in the industry. So again, I hope the economy bounces back quickly and hiring ramps up to normal levels later this spring, but in case it doesn't, these are four things I definitely recommend as you're looking for your first or next job in the industry. Now, if you are looking for a job in the industry and you wanna take that first step in learning real estate financial modeling in Excel, make sure to check out the free Break into CRE Real Estate Financial Modeling Crash Course. That's gonna give you a real foundation for how to build real estate financial models in Excel, and I'll link that in the description below. And if you do have graduation coming up in the next few months, and you wanna make sure that even if hiring gets tight, you have all of the skill sets that you need to land a job in the industry, check out Break into CRE Academy, and I'll also link that in the description as well. So I hope that was helpful. If you like this video and wanna see more content like this, let me know by hitting the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.